Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Rust Electricity for Beginners. My name is Ozzy and today we'll be talking about 11 components that allow you to combine power, divert it, and a number of other useful things. First up we have the root combiner and what this allows me to do is connect multiple power sources together. For example, if you've ever tried putting two solar panels in to charge a battery, the root combiner is the best way to do that. Now you can combine root combiners into each other to uh, sort of tier tree a number of power sources together. However, it doesn't really like a lot of other non-source components connecting to it. You see, I can't connect these counters in. Now you can connect batteries together using the root combiner. However, interesting to note, so we've got 50 power coming in from each battery. We have 100 power coming out. And this light only utilizes one power. However, on the active usage, we see each of these batteries shows an active usage of one. So the root combiner is actually pulling that one power from both batteries at the same time. So this really becomes inefficient unless you actually need to run a circuit that's using, say, 80 to 100 power all at the same time. But at that point, it's going to pull 50 power from both. There are ways to make this more efficient, but for now it's better to know that sometimes having multiple smaller circuits off each battery is better than trying to combine them together. Next up, we have an electrical branch. Now this is going to be your bread and butter in creating multiple circuits off the same battery. The way this works is an electrical branch has two outputs allowing us to split the power. The branch output can be configured, its default is 2. And uh, actually we can change this to one if we want because this light only takes one power and the remainder comes out of the power out node. So whatever is not being used in the branch will come out of the power out and we can continue on to power some lights. We can connect this to other branches, um, anything we want really. Now, if I want to say connect this to the furnace and adjust this to three power, you'll see this drops down to 47. So if you're ever editing your electrical circuits and making adjustments, try and be sure you have enough power in your out, power out to still power whatever you have connected there. Now, if I wanted to connect all three of these electric furnaces, I'd need quite a few electrical branches. I would need one for each thing I wanted to connect to. However, there's another component that's quite nifty. It's the splitter. What the splitter does is it takes whatever its power in amount and it splits it between active nodes. None of these are active, so you can see it's not actually putting power out. However, if I connect the electric furnace here, it's now sending all three of that power here. But if I connect another furnace, it tries to split its power between the two nodes, with the excess going to the left node first. If I connect to all three, you'll see it splits evenly, one to each. And if I come back to my branch and I set that to 9 power, 3 for each furnace, it has enough to power them all, splitting evenly 3 across. So if I've got multiple items that need the same amount of power, I can use splitters instead of branches to power a lot of them. You can put splitters into splitters and tear them down that way. Just keep in mind, it's going to start getting dicey on the math as you do that, with the leftmost taking the priority in excess, sometimes it can get a little funky. Now next up we have a blocker. Now a blocker will allow power to pass through it as long as there is no power going into this block pass through node. So a button only gives power for a moment, right? So as long as the button is pressed, the it will block power coming through. Now if I connect this instead to a solar panel, the solar panel will block this power as long as there's daylight outside and the solar panel can receive power. It's one of the ways that you can activate your nights at night only. Now there's a more efficient way to do this circuit, but essentially that's how the blocker works. Next up we have a switch, which only allows power to pass through if it is flipped on. Now you can flip it on manually and you can also use these nodes on the right here to switch it on or switch it off with an external output that can be a battery, a button, um, anything else you want really. So one of the ways you can use this is you can have the switch for your lights in your base 
and perhaps a couple buttons on the other side of your base if you want to be able to turn it on and off with a button. Now an important note is that raiders can use switches and buttons without authorization on your TC, so be careful where and how you use these in your base. Next up, we have an OR switch. An OR switch allows power to pass through like normal, but if you have two power sources co connected, it will take the larger power and pass it through. For example, the solar panel has 20 power passing through it, and it will take that power from the solar panel instead. So you can see the battery is not actually draining at all because it's not pulling power from the battery. This is one of the ways that you can say, hey, whenever uh, night happens and the solar panel is no longer receiving power, go ahead and power off the battery instead. Next, we have an AND switch. Now this one only allows power to pass through if both sources are receiving power. For example, if I plug this battery in over here, now it's receiving power from both sides. It still will pull power from the largest source. So even though both of these are plugged in, the 50 will be passed on. That one has an active usage of one, whereas this one has no active usage. Another way you can use these is if you want something to only be powered during the day, you can plug that into a solar panel. And then at night, when the solar panel stops receiving power, the circuit will turn off. Next up, we have the X or switch, which is kind of like the opposite of an AND switch. It'll allow power to pass through as long as only one node is receiving power. If both nodes receive power, it turns off the switch, and it will only pass through whichever power it is receiving at the time. One of the ways you can use this is with battery backups. If I've got a dead battery, Say I have this battery connected to a branch coming over here that's telling this circuit don't turn on because this one still has power. This battery is dead. You can see its capacity is at zero, allowing the 50 from the medium battery to now pass through to the light. Over here we have a timer. Timers are nifty because they allow power to pass through for a certain amount of time. If you hold the options button and set the time, the default is 10 seconds. We're going to set that to three real quick and you can manually activate this or you can have power go into the toggle now for this toggle we only need a pulse of power it doesn't need to be set steady state such as from a battery or a power source there are a number of cool things you can do with this in circuits but that's effectively how it works you can only set the time while it is off though if it is activated you see i don't have the option there to set the time so be careful when setting these up, you don't accidentally activate it for a minute or so and lock yourself out for a while before adjusting it. Next up, we have a memory cell. Memory cells are very useful components. However, there is quite a lot that goes into them. So a memory cell will be green-red or inverted power by default. Now a memory cell always has power coming out of it, it's just which node it's coming out of that changes. So by default, it's out of the left here. You see if I connect the right, power's not actually coming out. So the three nodes on the right allow you to change where the power is coming from. This reset node will switch power to the left. As you can see, it's not actually doing anything when I press the button. The set node will switch power to the right output. As I press the button, it switches over to the right and the green-green configuration. I can press this again and it's not going to do anything because it's still telling it to switch to the right. Now I can also use this toggle at the bottom so that one input can switch between both of them, which is quite useful for a number of circuits. It's also good to note that a memory cell will remember what state it was in the last time it was powered. So even though the default is green-red and the left output, if it was last powered on the right output it will remember that for next time. Now over here we have a RAND circuit, and I'm a little bit out of batteries, so I'm just going to throw this down here, throw in some fuel real quick and turn that on. A little bit of portable power, and our generator is putting 40 in and there's no power out. The default configuration for a RAND circuit when it's turned on is this green-red configuration, and that green-red configuration can be gotten to any time you hit the reset. See, it's not actually going to do anything right now. However, if we throw another button down here and we put on the set, 
The set is not going to turn the circuit on necessarily. What it actually does is it gives us a 50% chance to change the state of the RAND switch. Right now its state is effectively off, so I have a 50% chance by pressing this button to turn on that light. And we're not lucky. And we're still not lucky. There we go. Now that the light is on, this button will give us a 50% chance to turn it off. And we got it first try that time. Now if the light's already on, this button will always, 100% of the time, return it to the green-red, no power flowing through configuration. Also useful for a good number of circuits. Another thing to note is the RAN switch also remembers its state when powered back on, so keep that in mind when using one of these. Those are the 11 components that allow you to combine, redirect, and do all sorts of things with power. If this video helped you out, please hit that like button down below. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below for me, and I will see you all next time.